Hello and welcome to ukrainemedia.com. My name is Sergey, and today I'll be showing you how to make this uh, potato chip bag animation inside Cinema 4D and After Effects. Uh, it won't be the exact same animation, but I'll be basically walk through the steps that I went through to create something like this. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are inside Cinema 4D, and it's going to be kind of a long tutorial, so I'll I'll try to be quick, so I won't be explaining things as much as I normally would. So uh, please try to keep up. If you have to, pause the video and go back and rewatch or whatnot. But anyway, let's bring a cube into our scene, and uh, on the Y axis, let's bring that to up to 300, and on Z down to one. So right now we're modeling a basic shape of our um, potato chip bag. So we'll also insert a segment into Y and X so we have a little cross going but let me go to display and pick lines so we can see lines okay so now we have a basic shape I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard or this button to make it editable and then I'm going to go into uh, face mode and select these top two faces and by holding control and click and drag on Y uh, axis and hold shift to snap 10 increments so 10 centimeters here that's going to be good so we extrude by 10 centimeters and we'll do the same thing at the bottom over here hold control shift to snap and that's good all right so we have a basic shape here basically this is where, where the bag will be sealed and it's flat right now, so we'll, we'll be modeling it. But before we go any further, before we insert any more loops and, uh, you know, cuts and vertices, uh, let's create a texture and we'll apply it right now while uh, we're, uh, our shape is still a basic shape. So I'm going to right click here to make a, a texture and then on the, over here on the color I'm going to load an image. I already have a potato chip bag image uh, that I did not create. I found this on the website uh, and so I'll be sure to post the link uh, down below for anyone who wants it but you can you can create your own on, in Photoshop or uh, you can actually get a potato chip bag and open it up and scan it and so but anyway whatever you want to do that's your choice but I'm gonna use this uh, and then I'll probably do a reflection let's do Fresnel and I'll do like 25 for right now and then I'll adjust it um, so that's good for right now this will do and what I will do is apply to our mesh and as you can see that it's messed up looking so let's name this bag by the way so what I'll do next I'm gonna have to go into UV edit and now we have a basic form so let's, these are the controls we'll be using so if you go to face you can tell if you select this face and that face and this face that they're all overlapping so we need to unwrap this whole mesh in here so to do that let's control shift a to select everything uh, you uh, symbol 4d has this cool feature called projection and you can literally unwrap it uh, inside here by hitting these uh, already preset uh, basically pre-made stuff so and I know that this box one works perfect for what we're trying to achieve so it does everything exactly how I want it to be uh, it doesn't look right here but we can go back to our um, user uh, startup user and um, we can go into this texture right here and adjust things UV by the way it stands for XY so if you go on X axis and you can let's go over here actually you can uh, adjust it however you want to you know you can hold down alt and you can be more precise so I'm just trying to center these okay and I'm gonna do the same for Y doesn't have to be perfect you can always adjust later so for me uh, this is good enough it looks pretty good uh, so yeah let me by the way let me go back to UV edit and I want to see my grid there you go all right, so this is pretty good. Now, if you if I apply a hypernerb, you can tell that it looks all messed up, and we'll fix that. We'll insert some loops, but let me name this potato chip bag. Okay, and uh, what we'll do next? Uh, actually, I don't like texture on it while I'm working, so I'm gonna have to insert a tag called display and inside here I'm going to select use texture and then just like this so basically I can see what I'm 
you know basically the lines are not blending in with the image so that's good uh, so I'm gonna hide this hypernerve and I'll go into a front view and I'm gonna select if, if you notice it rounds here a lot so I'm gonna select um, I'm gonna insert a few loops here so if we hold if you click K or um, use K, K on your keyboard and go down to loop we can do loop cut here here and here so it'll round up and I want it to be um, like a sharp edge here as well for the sealed area it'll make sense as we go so right here and also up top in the same places so right there and right there so now if we go back to here and turn our hypernerve back on you can tell that it looks more like a bag now the sealed area is right there but it's like a flat bag so now we're gonna have to model it uh, and to do that we'll go into uh, point mode and I'm gonna select a uh, select tool here and then I'm gonna make sure only select visible elements is checked off so I'll select the front two vertices or the middle ones and then I'll go to scale and if you hold shift and, dra and drag on the Z axis I think you can start molding it and you can tell when you turn this on you can tell that we're starting to model our bag so that's good and you hit, if you hit space it goes back to last tool you used so that's a nice feature I'm gonna turn hypernerve off for just right now and you can go into different um, views to select whatever vertice you want to select so use be sure to use that uh, you know you're not married to perspective view so keep that in mind it definitely helps especially like for stuff like here or here you know when you're modeling it uh, you can go you know make it look more like a bag especially with the hypernerve you can tell what it looks like that might be too fat looking but you can always ad adjust that stuff so now you have like a basic form uh, and then also keep in mind when the edges are close together like like they're here when the vertices are close together or lines close together they create a sharp looking line so when you spread them apart like um, in this case let me select this let me go back to the select tool see how they're close together so when you separate them or you know spread them apart the edges get smoother especially when you have hypernerve see when you get closer it's sharp but then when you spread them it's more smooth so and that's the look we're kind of looking for um, you can move it around so definitely looks more like a potato chip bag and you can uh, add more um, loops but try to keep it to a minute down to a minimum um, I'm also yeah so let's I'm gonna insert two more loops here so let me turn this off off I hope you're keeping up with this <laughs> I know I'm going kind of fast, uh, so I'm going to do K again and select loop. And then if you go to snapping options, I'm going to select 3D and point and midpoint. So it's going to snap for me at midpoints. There you go, that was easy. And now I can go back to selection tool and select these and go back to scale. And now I can shape it a little bit more so you can tell shape it just slightly more so it's a little more defined and um, it's good to have side view from view and all that because you can kind of see that you want to have nice smooth line going here so like I'll go back to here so like these and then go back to scale and then bring them closer together maybe same thing for this and please I mean you can spend as much time as you want I mean uh, the sky is the limit on this stuff, but don't don't kill too much time. Uh, go spend time with the family sometimes. You know you you can get carried away here easily. Uh, so basically, I have a basic form of a potato chip bag, and it doesn't look too bad. It's a little too fluffy for me. Whoops. I'm gonna bring it in some. Okay. Um, so that's not too bad. This is a first 
attempt to it or uh, we're definitely going to Im keep improving this but once we have our initial um, pose or whatever you want to call it like initial bag set up now we we can uh, intro, uh, go into a pose and the character pose morph basically how it works we're going to animate points you can animate other stuff but all we're going to do is points and pose one is closed bag and then we're going to open up a new pose and we can manipulate it and it will still keep the the new one so it'll make sense as we go so let's go to second pose and now we're going to model an open bag pose but before we go before we do that let's do let's erase some faces up, up here up top so that we can open the bag so I'm just gonna select these and then hit delete okay so uh, and now we're keep in mind we're in edit mode and we're on pose one we already we already fin we're done with pose uh, zero so now we're going to pose one and I'm gonna go to selection um, let's go to vertice Okay, selection tool, select all these vertices, and I'm going to open the bag up. The same way we, we've been shaping uh, our bag, basically the same method. And I'm going to go into this view. Bring it in some. Bring this in. Basically have a nice smooth line going. Maybe, maybe not so much on here. It's not okay. So let's spread these some, and you can also like look at this view or this view. Probably this view would be better because you can see the line. Definitely take take advantage of different views. I think uh, that should help big time see like these are close together so they create a sharp line which we do not want okay that's good like I said you can spend a whole day making it perfect I don't have a whole day so I'm just playing around here um, let me spread these a little bit so now if you turn the hyper nerve back on you can tell it looks like a an open bag I mean, doesn't look bad. And cool with pose morph, if you switch to animate mode, you can um, literally animate, open and close, you know. So we're halfway there. Um, let's go back to edit mode. And we'll, okay, we have the basic shape. And obviously when you turn, let's turn our texture back on. You can tell that that doesn't look bad. It looks pretty good. And by the way, when you apply this texture, you can tell that it copies to the inside. And to do to fix that, let's go to this texture and instead of both, which is the sides, just select front, and that fixes it. So, um, before we go any further, let's bring this object up so it sits on this base. Okay. I'm sorry, I have a phone call. Ah, okay. All right, I'm back. Uh, yeah, so next, what we will do, um, we have everything set up. Let's keep working on our model a little bit and make it more realistic. Uh, what other things we can do? Uh, we can, the beauty, beautiful thing about uh, Pose Morph is you can go back and tweak things. So for instance, like here, we need to make this mesh a little bit more organic. And to do that, we can just, because it looks too symmetrical, we can pull, you know, pull this up a little bit, maybe, um, maybe scale this a little bit, you know, so make it less, less symmetrical kind of, or not necessarily symmetrical, less, by the way, turn the snap uh, feature off, and just more organic look, that's what I'm looking for. You can probably go here at the bottom, select, oops, select this and hit space to go to scale and give it a little more room at the bottom over here because usually chips are stored here at the bottom so give more definition there. Probably the same here. 
less at the top. Like I said, the sky is the limit. You can spend as much time as you want. So I'm okay with this for right now for for close bag. But let's go to open bag and do the same thing. Because right now it looks too, too good. And it's not acceptable. So maybe play with this. Maybe bring this down some. So probably do the same at the bottom so it's got a little some room here okay that's good another thing you can do because if you render this you can tell it just doesn't look as good and one second let me fix something Now, so yeah, when you render this, you can tell it's very smooth and just doesn't look natural. So you can also play around with like maybe bump map and uh, bring like a, I don't know, noise maybe. Go into noise, uh, let's bring that up to like 500. Not so black, let's go about here. E. Yeah, whatever works for you here. Uh, so subjective. Um, that's good enough. Yeah, I just don't like when things look too natural. But that, you know, that might, might be the look you're going for. So, but slight organic look doesn't hurt. So, ah, it's okay. All right. Well, um, what next I want to do is a. Um, Let's create a new texture for the inside, and usually it's like a it's like a grayish look. So let's go to Fresnel, maybe to like yeah, white and off white, something like that. I know it's very reflective, probably like five percent blur. Let's do Fresnel, maybe maybe like forty or something. Totally change probably later on, but. Um, that's basically it for right now. Um, that's good for right now. And now we can apply that to the same bag. Oops. And instead of both, let's do back. So you can't tell the difference once you render, but you can tell it's applied. Um, so what else we can do to this to improve it? Um, you can go and make it more organic by selecting vertices and you know offsetting some and all that but do it at your own time your con your own convenience but i'm going to move on uh, i'll start uh, i guess rigging at this point uh, i'm going to turn i'm going to turn the texture off right now okay and i'll bring in a uh and well yeah and side and uh xc axis i'm going to rotate that 90 degrees and I make it C hit C on the keyboard to make it editable okay um, let's go top view I'm gonna bring this up bring this up here and then scale it some. That's good. Basically, it's going to be the control. Wait a minute, I'll probably need to see the texture in a second. Okay, that's the front. Okay. And I'm going to name this bag control. And I'll drop everything underneath there. So. I also want to probably color it, probably blue since we already have yellow, it will stand out, okay. 
So yeah. Basically, instead of selecting the bag, we'll be animating this control, and we'll create uh, more data under it and stuff. So anyway, yeah, that's basically, we'll start everything with this control, and inside here, um, we'll, well, let's do, one second, yeah, let's do this. Now we have uh, Pose Morph, and in order to animate this, yeah, this one has to be zero, and this one has to be 100, or vice versa. So to do that, we'll have to, we'll have to create like an expressor tag and what I'm saying probably doesn't make much sense but it will here in a second um, so we'll bring in a, a control bag here and then let's go to oh we haven't opened up yet okay we'll also go to user data and add a new user and here we'll label it uh, open close and it will be limitations probably be a hundred percent well let's do it uh, zero to a hundred so that's all I need and make sure it's percent which it is uh, percent and that's good so now under user da data we have a like a slider I guess that's what it'd be called uh, that goes from zero to a hundred so somehow we'll link up this uh, those two features here into one uh, into one here so to do that, we'll bring a pose morph. Uh, control double click here to extend it, and then let's bring a uh, strength zero and strength one. And control click double click, and okay, that's good. And next, we'll bring in um, one second. We'll bring in range mapper and. Let's, we're going to go out of user data open and we'll connect through range mapper uh, these two into one. So let's let's see if this will make sense for you. Um, so let's go range mapper. Make sure that input range is, is percent and it's going into percent. So that's important. Make sure you set that up. And it, it, it's going to go from input lower zero, input upper 100, and it's going to go input lower zero and input lower 100. So we'll go into one and then uh, control click and drag and it duplicates another one and we'll just inverse this basically have a hundred to zero and basically these two will be connected. So for instance if you go into control it's already connected but the problem with that I want zero to be closed so all you have to do is just make sure you change your numbers from 0 to 100 on both and here it is you basically control uh, your bag here with one one little button or a slider and you know once you did that you can still go back into pose morph uh, and if you go into edit mode you can still edit your your mesh in fact I do want to edit a little bit I want to uh, let me turn this off. I want to make this open just slightly wider. Let me cancel this so we're done with that. Okay. Let's see what it looks like yeah that's what I want all right so we have that set up uh, so basically under our control we have under user data open close and all it does it opens and closes hold on let's go back to oh I know the problem we're in edit mode here so be sure you switch to animate okay and so here's our little function. Cool, right? All right, next, what we'll do, we'll put some bones in here and rig the bag a little bit. We can probably turn the texture back on. So in the front view, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to enable snapping. And uh, inside here, I'm going to do construction, grid, 
I don't want that stuff. Okay, and then I'm going to character. Um, uh, let's do join control. If you control click and drag, it snaps first joint, then the second bone, and so forth. So you just insert however many bones you, you would like. If you want a little too far, you can always um, select the root and scale it some. Okay, and I'm going to select all of them and under coordinates, let's freeze all. Oh, freeze all. And that way everything's zero down. So, our bones, uh, if you notice, if you go to here and select like second and to the last joint, you can tell that you can go side to side, front to back. You can already tell that this will work. And notice I'm not selecting the first because the first doesn't a little too much for me. I don't want to do that. I want the, the base to be stationary. So somehow we're going to link these up into uh, yeah, like a one slider. Um, but anyway, let's do that right now. Um, what I'm going to do next uh, is switch my views. Uh, let's go here and create a new user data add a new user and in here we're going to create side to side Oops. and be sure it's a uh, degree and we don't need any limitations so it, the, you can do copy and paste to do front to back front to back copy and paste for twist and that's all we need for right now really all right and now we're gonna link them up with these like side to, uh, front to back so if we go to our control and user and like front to back let's right click animation and set driver it's going to be driving everything so you're you're the driver and then we're going to select the, the bones we want to be affected and then go to coordinates and if we're doing front to back so we're going to say all right this front to back thing on all of the bones you're going to be absolutely driven so absolutely the exact number relative is just going to you know it's going to be like you don't have to have the exact zero to 360 or whatever uh, so absolute is going to do exactly the same what you have in the control I'm not sure if that making sense, but anyway, so that's good. We'll select these. So if you go to front to back over here, front to back or user data, um, you can tell that it's already linked up. So that's good. By the way, before we go any further, let's select the bones and the mesh. Uh, and if you go to character and command bind, it will bind. Uh, it will basically bind the mesh to the bones. So if you go to front to back, you can tell that it's it's working. So next, uh, we'll select this right here, side to side, and then right click animation, set driver. Now this one's gonna be side to side and will be our driver. And then select the bones you wanna be affected. And so side to side is uh, this one right here. So we're gonna select it, right click, and say you're gonna be driven and absolute, okay? And the same thing, we're gonna go back to control, double check, make sure side to side works, which it does. Awesome. So now we're gonna do twist. So right click here, animation, set driver, and select the bones you wanna be affected. And then twist is this feature right here. So we'll, we'll right click here, animation, and set driven, absolute. So that's it for rigging really. Um, so if you go to user data, now we have open, close, side to side. Um, we have front and back uh, and twist. Uh, so that's cool. Another thing we can do to this, um, probably, yeah, let's add a, where is that feature? Um, one second, yeah, squash and stretch. So we'll add, add that to the scene, make sure to add it underneath the bag. 
and the way this works let's go to this view you have to kind of set um, where is it at top be sure the top is at the top if you notice is this feature right here it's moving be sure it's at your top and the bottom is at your bottom okay so that's all you need really and now you can go into these features and you know a factor you know you can play with expand well it only matters when you have a factor so now you can expand and stuff so let's link these up into our control because I don't want to be going into squash and stretch and play here I want to do everything in this control so it definitely makes your life easier when you do it that way so let's do user data uh, manage and one second let me let me do this okay um, and then here user data manage so here we'll do we'll add another one and this one as you can tell is just uh, it is a percent so make sure make sure it's a percent uh, we don't need any limitations on that so we'll do uh, squash and stretch whoops squash and stretch and it's factor so that's one let's copy that and paste and then this one is expand okay that's cool and our default value let's keep it a hundred because it's already a hundred there all right cool so now what we're gonna do we're gonna say alright factor you're gonna be our driver and then we'll go into squash and stretch and select the factor and animation and driven absolute okay and we'll do the same thing here right click driver and then the same here uh, on expand driven absolute okay and so now if you if you were to go to uh, control and you can tell that you can control squash and stretch and expand so that's cool you can keep it uh, keep it up to 100 all right so we have those features uh, made and next what we can do all right, where else can we do this? Uh, we can insert a light. Yeah, let's do this. By the way, I'm just going here on the fly, so I'm sorry if uh, I'm not making any sense. Uh, so let's do a spotlight. Uh, let's, uh, let's rotate it 90 degrees so it's looking up. And this light basically is going to, uh, when the bag opens up, it's going uh, to be lit up. So let's move that up here. By the way, turn this feature off. Okay. And let's go into the light setting. We'll go to volumetric. Let me open this up. So when you render this, you can tell the light is, is, is working. So let's play with this light just a little bit. Uh, detail, let's do cone like this. Okay. Let's see what we, yeah that's the look I'm looking for so that that's pretty cool um, but the problem with this actually let's put it in our bag I want it to be always gone with my bag so uh, what I want to do is when the bag is closed I want the light to be uh, the light intensity to be zero and so basically quick fix would be this bringing this light I'm gonna name it I'm going to name it bag light. Okay. So basically, we'll tell. Uh, okay, one second. How do. Okay, yeah. Intensity, it's under. Where the heck is it? One second. Uh, general, okay. So general intensity. And we'll tell it to go straight to here because it's actually going from zero to 100 already percent. So it's going to be quick fix. So now and notice if if I close the bag, the light's going to be tiny. But when I open it, it's going to be bright. So 
it really fixes it. It's cool to use Expressive for stuff like that because you you do want to avoid as many keyframes as you can. Uh, I don't know about you, but I do like to avoid. I hate keyframes. I hate when there's too many of them. Uh, so definitely, definitely, if you can, uh, do a lot of the damage here in Expressive and avoid any other hassle you might come across. But anyway, that's what we have so far. Um, as you can tell, when you render it, <laughs> you can't see anything because now we need to insert more, more lights. But I'm not going to use any global illumination, uh, any of that, because it's going to take more time to render. And I'm at home here. My computer is not as powerful. Uh, so I'll just have to light it myself. And to do that, I will just do basic lighting. So I'll do this, probably do a ray. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oops. All right, do that. Um, let's raise, let's spread them out some. You can tell it's a little too bright. So I'm gonna bring the intensity to about 50 maybe. I just want it to be kind of lit. I'm still gonna use a Headlight um, spotlight here. Actually, let me use the target spotlights. Okay. Go to details. I'm sorry if this is boring, uh, boring for you, but I'm trying to uh, establish the look I'm going for. So this is not too bad. Uh, we can also bring a uh, sky, and yeah, let's see what they have uh, here in presets. So if you go to presets, maybe prime materials, HDRIs. See what they have. What we can use. Something like this, maybe. Okay, um, let's go back here. And um, in, in the sky, let's apply that to the sky with a little tag, uh, a compositing tag. And here we'll say not to be seen by the by camera, but it will, s well, actually, let's see. Um, we do want the reflections and stuff. I really don't care about shadowing and stuff. Transparency, that's good. So I just want basically the reflections to see. Yeah, so because we do have a reflective material and I might go into our texture and um, bring it up to about hmm, maybe 30 and put some blur, maybe like 8% blur. So something like that it won't hurt. The reflection does help uh, make it more realistic, but obviously, you know, I'm not using HDRI, uh, HDRI, you know, or any of that, or you know, to to light the scene. So we're just gonna do the old school. All right, so we have the basic form here. Um, we have the controls. Make sure they're all working. Yeah, we have. Uh, squash and stretch so basically we are set uh, to animate but anyway let's I think I'm gonna pause this tutorial here and pick it up from uh, from here in our next part next part we'll obviously we'll do potato chips uh, we'll do some animation uh, and call it done all right well thanks guys for watching this, this tutorial I'll pick it up from here in my next tutorial uh, so be sure to watch that thanks so much take care